Tell me the importance of a manufacturing roundtable like the one that you just stepped out of from the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce. I think the biggest importance we've seen up to this point is the bridging of gaps in our workforce development pipeline. So we don't have necessarily the higher education exposure most of the time. So to have that connection with higher education to other manufacturers with collaborative um, technologies that are beneficial, best practice sharing, it's, it's kind of a wide gamut of, of benefits. But the most recent has really been on the connection between higher ed and the chamber's response to manufacturing needs. When you take a look at higher ed, and obviously so many colleges and universities are right here in, in central Massachusetts, and it's a strong point of, of Massachusetts, are they meeting the needs? Are the classes that are being offered, the certificate programs that are being offered, do they meet the needs of St. Gobain? Um, up to this point, I think they have met the needs. I think as we move into the new technologies, the new areas that we need. I think the, the challenge is going to be in really catering their specific hands-on knowledge to working in a manufacturing environment. They're learning um, very advanced techniques a lot of the time and sometimes we just need fundamental problem solving. So I think that concept of how to work in an environment, how to work safely in an environment with the right regulations, but also collaborate with all different generations of workforce is going to be something that we'll have to continue to develop at both higher education and, and lower education in the high schools. Yeah, interesting because, of course, so many superintendents from so many uh, different school systems, vocational schools, were represented here today. That's part of it as well. Are, are some of those students able then to come right out and be part of that workforce? Absolutely. We have a number of students that we've hired directly out of the vocational schools. Uh, we have a couple on our, our shop floor that we do with co-ops at that point or with this point as well. Um, and we've got a number of se seasoned alumni that have come out of the vocational schools as well. So they are able to hit the ground running and then they're also able to go on for higher education while they're with us. To, uh, to develop their career further. First, give us a little bit of an overview of what's happening at Assabet Valley Vocational. Assabet Valley, uh, we offer 17 career and tech ed programs. Advanced manufacturing is one of the programs that we currently offer, as well as drafting and design technologies, um, the metal fabrication program, which includes manufacturing, as well as our biotechnology program that is also part of our manufacturing cluster. Um, with that, um, I, I think if we look back at the history of, of where we're at at Assabet Valley, Bryant was lead teacher in the advanced manufacturing program back when it was machine technology. And we evolved it forward with technology uh, due to his efforts in collaboration with uh, another gentleman who was at the school up until last year. They, they were both advanced manufacturing professionals and they saw the future of the industry. They connected with MACWIC and uh, they built forward through the the grants that uh, initiated under um, Tim Murray uh, and Deval Patrick and has continued forward from that time. Brian's expertise um, in, the, in the field was really the direction that we took. He identified the need for simulator training for students, CAD lab, and all the current CNC equipment that we currently have in the program. And with that, I defer to him so he can speak a little bit more. Um, Very good, and Bryant, yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested in how the program evolved. I also, though, I'm going to need a little tutorial. MACWIC stands for? Manufacturing Advancement Center Workforce Innovation Collaborative. You know, early on, it was a belief that uh, manufacturing was going away, and uh, truly people re were retiring and the jobs remained. So that, you know, in 2008, the skills gap became really noticeable. So we started to really f um, fill those positions. Um, with our support of our school, our program advisory, and local business. So each shop has a program advisory committee, and so we recognize the needs, and the needs start from everything from basic machining, uh, manual machining, right through the CNC, and that's sort of what led us to evolve into the CNC part. MacWIC, um, we really embraced uh, and helped to, you know, sort of champion the MacWIC certifications so that our students could graduate with some type of certification um, when they went and applied for jobs. So they weren't just somebody that we said had training, they actually passed third party exams. So that was a big, a big step for our students. Um, in addition, uh, currently now I'm a co-op coordinator, so I uh, work with manufacturers, but I work across all 17 industries. And we have some interesting things uh, evolving out of that as well, like our auto tech program. Um, some of their students are going into um, industrial coding, so they're working at manufacturers to do different types of coding. So we're finding a lot of different avenues for our students uh, anywhere we can. So. 
What has changed in that time? What are we seeing? 17 years ago, was manufacturing thought to be, to be stronger? Has manufacturing changed? The needs of the, of the students and the way that you approach it changed? Well, I think we've always had strong manufacturing in Southern Worcester County, but I think what's changed is the urgency of the uh, need for replacement workers. The retirement uh, uh, crisis is, is hitting now. We've heard about it for 20 years. Well, now we have the uh, uh, folks are retiring, so there's a lot of jobs out there. And the uh, skills have changed. Uh, the needs, uh, uh, it's a much more uh, automated manufacturing environment. So uh, we've stayed uh, on the cutting edge uh, by keeping our curriculum fresh. We just uh, refreshed our, manu our machine shop with a half a million dollars worth of new equipment that will be found in industry. We'll be training on that at Bay Path now. The hands-on for the students through the, through the co-op. Uh, tell me a little bit more uh, about that. Gets those kids uh, on the path, I would think, not only to, to success and, and some real-world experience, but maybe the ends with the companies that right from graduation, right, to going to work. Absolutely. About 90% of our uh, students that are on co-op, uh, seniors, are actually hired by those co-op employers after graduation, which, which is fantastic. Uh, the way our co-op works is one week the student will be in school on academics, the following week they'd be in shop, they'd be working for the manufacturer. So the manufacturer pays them and also grades them. So they're their teacher. You know, it's an extension of their education. Works out very well. And it really um, <coughs> rounds out what they're doing because they're, we're, we're teaching them a bunch of skills, but now they're in their industry specific learning even more. So it's, it's a great program. Ken, you were here for the Manufacturing Roundtable at the Chamber. What did you take away from this? Obviously, you are in the business of creating jobs. Your company has expanded. And here you had an opportunity to be able to hear from and also speak to some of the superintendents of the school departments. Um, I think it just reinforces my uh, belief that Worcester is a great place to be for manufacturing. We're getting a lot of support. Um, we think of um, the, the vocational schools that are around, the uh, colleges, um, uh, particularly uh, Quinn Sigamond, uh, WPI, uh, great supporters of, of manufacturing, um, Mass MEP and, and the MACWIC program. There's just a lot going on in manufacturing to help, help area manufacturers. And I think that um, what we're fighting is a, is, a, is a narrative that's going on, particularly at the national level, that, that manufacturing is dead and, and, and it's all being stolen from us when really it's, it's a very exciting time to be in manufacturing. Right. And certainly uh, the fact that you sponsored this roundtable means that, that you see the, the value in it. The role that the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce can truly play with bringing people together. I think it's it's the glue, if you will, between the different composite pieces that need to be put together. So the chamber at least is the center of access, if you will, of information. So they connect between education, the, the grant development people, and then also the manufacturers, I think is, is what I see the, the value of the chamber being right now is the glue between those things to make those connections happen and stick.